You know, it happens to every single one of us, right? When we shampoo and condition, or we brush our hair, or we take a hair tie out, and we notice strands of hair all over the place. You know, the next question that usually follows is, ah, crap, am I balding? You know, probably not. You know, I wouldn't worry about that. If you want to learn more about how much hair falls normal, I answered that in another video, and I will link to it in the description. You can open it in a new tab and watch. But this video is meant to answer the next question I usually follow. It's like, okay, I'm not balding, but is this natural shedding or is this actually breakage? And how do I tell the difference? Because one is completely natural and the other one is actually damaging. So let's figure that out in this video. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. If you guys enjoy talking all about grooming from a scientific point of view to help you look and feel your best, please smash that like and subscribe button and join the family. We also have an amazing men's hair growth group on Facebook. It's called The Mannered Mains. So come to Facebook and join the community. I'll link to it in the description. So let's start by differentiating shedding and breakage. Okay, so shedding. It's a totally normal part of the hair life cycle. And to explain, we'll talk about how hair grows. So hair growth happens in phases. Phase one is called the antigen phase. And this can last anywhere from two to eight years, depending on your genetics. And it's basically when the follicle is open and it's receiving blood flow and nutrients and your hair is growing. Phase two is called catagen. And this is when the blood flow starts to slow down and it can last anywhere from a few months. And this is when growth starts to become a little bit more dormant or just a lot slower. And then phase three is called telogen. And this is when blood supply has basically been cut off. The hair shaft naturally sheds from the root. And that's important. This can take anywhere from one to two months before antigen kick starts back up and starts growing again. And is an important thing to note is that every single hair follicle is different, right? So individual hairs will shed at different times and they could be years apart sometimes. You know, this is why not every single hair on your head sheds at the exact same time. So that's shedding, right? And now let's move on to breakage. This is basically when a hair is plucked from its root prematurely while still in that antigen phase, or if the hair breaks somewhere along the shaft because it is too dry or brittle or damaged. The most common cause of breakage is from hair being too dry and brittle or simply being too rough with it. If you're washing it too roughly or you're brushing it like really hard. That's what she said. <laughs> but you can test if your hair is too dry by doing the elasticity test. And if you watched my protein moisture balancing video, I show you how to do that test. But basically you take one strand of hair and you tug on it. If it breaks, your hair is too dry and you need more moisture and your hair is at a higher risk of breaking from daily activities like brushing or washing or whatever you're doing, putting your hair up. If your hair stretches and then bounces back, kind of like a rubber band, your hair is really balanced. It's not at as high a risk of breakage. Something else to look out for with breakage is your hair type, right? Your hair texture actually. So fine textured hair, this type of hair I have, is the really thin kind. It's thinner and weaker than coarse hair. Coarse hair is really thick and when I'm talking about here is the diameter of the individual hair strand. So this is hair texture, not hair density. So fine textured hair like mine needs to be treated very, very gently. So things like rough brushing or using damaging hair ties are the number one way that fine hair, any hair really, but especially fine hair, that's one of the most common ways it breaks. You do want to brush your hair gently with a wide tooth comb first and you wanna start from the roots and you wanna work your way up. And if you start to feel hair catching and you push through, so that's basically your hair breaking when you push through and that could damage your follicle causing the new hairs that come in, they'll grow in like coarser or rougher. And sometimes that's why we sort of see like these twisty baby hairs on top of our head is when we break our hair prematurely and then that's how the new ones grow in because the follicle didn't stop blood flow naturally. Elastic black hair ties from the drugstore, they're really elastic and I like how they hold my hair tightly, but there's that one section on it that glues the hair tie together. And my stylist was telling me that because I have like really fine hair, that that glue can almost be like a knife, right? And it actually cuts really fine hair. It's too sharp. So I actually switched my hair ties. I use the ones from the long hairs or I use the ones from, they're like the keychain looking ones. So it looks like a keychain, but it's really like a hairband 
because those are just, they're much gentler on your hair. They don't pull, they don't break, they don't cut. So those are the ties I've been using quite a bit lately. Also wearing really tight buns can weaken your hair follicle over time and damage it. You know, this can cause premature breakage as well, but it won't happen after one time. This is something that occurs over time when you're constantly putting stress on your hair follicle and pulling it back. It can damage the follicle and that could lead to breakage. So when putting your hair up, be sure to keep it loose, keep it breathable. Some other causes of damaged hair that leads to breakage are chemically treating your hair or bleaching, you know, using too much heat tools, too often, too close to one concentrated area. Even diet and lifestyle can play a role. Too much stress could lead to telogen effluvium, which is when basically your hair rapidly shifts from the antigen catagen into the telogen phase and it just sheds much faster. And sometimes this is even confused for male pattern baldness, but it is totally different and it definitely is treatable. Now that we've defined what causes breakage, what causes shedding and the difference between the two, when your hair falls out, how can you tell the difference between what is what? So the only real test that I've seen to look at this is called the bulb test. And I don't know how accurate this is, but basically it's whenever you have a hair fall out from brushing or from scrubbing or whenever your hair comes out, what you wanna do is look at that piece of hair. And if it has a little white bulb on the end of it, then that's from your hair follicle and that is your naturally shed hair because it has the bulb from the root that your hair grew out from still attached to it and that's just a hair that is naturally shed. If there's not a bulb and or the hair that fell out is shorter than the regular length of your hair, then this is just a sign that your hair has broken somewhere along the hair shaft. So I'm not 100% sure how accurate that bulb test is because you know hair can be plucked from the root prematurely, but I think that what is more likely is that when your hair breaks, it's breaking mid shaft because it's either weak or damaged or it's dry or it's brittle, it'll break somewhere along the shaft and that's just usually what breakage is. So the next time you look down at your brush or you're in the shower and you see hair coming out, look at it and see if there's a little bulb attached to it and chances are that's just your natural shedding. If there's no bulb and it's not as long as your normal hair length, then chances are that your hair broke somewhere along the follicle. And it's not 100% foolproof way of telling difference, but it is a great start and it will help you identify shedding versus breakage. And if you guys are worried about balding from that, I do have another video you guys can go watch. I'll link to it in the description. And fun fact, the average human head has on average 100 to 200,000 strands of hair. And we shed about 100 to 200 hairs per day naturally. So don't worry about a little bit of hair fall and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. My hair crazy right now. Oh, frizz. The frizz. Miss Frizzle. Please let this be a normal field trip with a frizz. No way. With the frizz. No way. Run and do on the street. My hair looks like kind of wavy now. Like my waves are starting to really come out a lot more. Look at that. I never used to have that. It used to just be straight, but now, dude, I think my hair type like changes. It's weird. Anyways, I'm not complaining. I think it looks cool, but I think that it's less likely 